Time to take our first look at sports, and Carly Agro joining me to take over for that. And Carly, we were talking about a little bit uh, before the uh, came in for the story, basically, and really the Bobcats, have, they've got their work kind of cut out for them. The Friends of the Bobcats have a plan in place, but they've got to take steps to make sure that plan's going to work for next year. Yeah, and they certainly made that, or at least one of the initial steps in that right direction today. Well, today the Friends of the Bobcats took yet another step forward in the rebuilding and restructuring of the Lloydminster Bobcats. The AJHL franchise announced the newest member of their front office staff. The news of the day is uh, we have hired Friends of the Bobcats. Uh, Malcolm Radke. We welcome uh, Malcolm here. There's a lot of work ahead of us and I think if people have faith in us, we're going to produce. <laughs> Radke was born and raised right here in Lloydminster and recently graduated from the U of S Edwards School of Business. It means a lot to me um, to be able to come home and, you know, have a job that is a dream job basically and it's something that I've, I've been studying in school it's been what I've been preparing for since day one and yeah absolutely to be able to come home to my own hometown you know bring my old friends out to the games and see people around the community yeah it's a thrill well I think it was the one of the biggest things we were looking for is to try to get somebody that knows the community knows people has been here before and has a relationship within the community I thought uh, when we all talked, all the board members were here doing the interview, we felt that that was going to be one of the criteria. And we actually had the two finalists who were both had backgrounds in this area. So it was a no-brainer. It just was a tough decision on who we were going to take. And then unanimously, Malcolm got the choice. With a record number of season seats purchased, 837 to date, Radke says he's committed to ensuring the team is supported more than ever before. At the end of the day, it's, it's getting people out to the games. Um, compared to last year, we have a lot of season tickets sold already, so the big question is how can we engage people? You know, Brian's in charge of the on ice, and we have a lot of faith in him. He's building a great team, in my opinion, and I'm sort of in charge of the off ice. How can we get people engaged? How can we make it more entertaining? And and that's the biggest challenge for me. Radke and the rest of the Bobcat staff have a busy summer ahead. Plenty of camps, training, and fundraisers have been booked, including the Bobcats Evening of Champions, traditionally held the night before the new season begins. Well, summer might not be here yet, but the boys of fall, the St. Paul Lions, have already started to prepare for their upcoming season. The team is hard at work at spring training camp, and as Clayton Brown explains, the Lions coaching staff are setting the bar high. The St. Paul Lions are looking to improve on their 3-2 record and second round exit from the playoffs last season. The team has lost some key players, but the coaches believe they'll be able to fill those voids. We've got lots of veterans still who can uh, fill those positions, and the, the grade 10 guys give us a lot of depth, and some of them are going to be starters too because uh, there's some really skilled players from that bunch. Team officials say they're looking to character as one of the team's strengths. They not only feel they have good veteran leadership, but the experience gained from reaching the provincial finals by the new grade 10 students is a huge advantage. The Bengals coming up, I mean, they just had a really successful season where they went uh, deep into the playoffs. And so they've got that experience, which, which uh, should help them to know not to fold under pressure. The Lions are only in week two of training camp, but the team will see how they match up against others in the league this weekend as they take part in some exhibition action. We've got uh, uh, Cole Lake coming down and Bonneville and a uh, team from Ardrossan coming out. So uh, they're all good football teams, um, which is going to test our young, our young fellas. Uh, and they're, we're going to find out what they're made of early on. Todd says the games aren't about winning or losing. It's about getting in some game action. It's, it's more for the young guys. It's to get them used to the speed of the high school game. Uh, it's to get them a lot of reps. Um, getting them used to uh, the speed of the game and the size of the boys that they're going to be going up against. The Lions wrap up their spring camp on June 3rd. In St. Paul, Clayton Brown, New Cap Sports. Last night in Rocky Mountain Lacrosse action, the Wheatland Extreme were trying to improve their record to 7-1 as they hosted the Wainwright Wolfpack. The Extreme do open the scoring in the first with fresh legs on the floor as Bryce Wells, all he takes his time, will cradle it, he gets it over to Braden Ludkey. Lucky is down low. He takes the initial shot. That gets stopped, but Tyler Boyer is there to pounce on the rebound. That puts the extreme up 1-0. Still in the first, the extreme are shorthanded. Ivan Stewart, their keeper, makes a stop. And again, it's Wellsdale who comes up with the rebound. This time, this guy goes coastal. He targets the far post and makes it count. The extreme are up 2-0. 
Now the pack will have their turn. They're a man up. They're down by two in the first. They got on the board when Matt Sampson, he will get the better of the scramble here. He maintains possession of it. Keep your eye on number 10. That's him. He beats the extremes netminder Stewart. He goes low. That cuts the extremes lead to a single goal. Then with 25 seconds to go in the first, the extreme make the most of their two-man advantage. Brand McAllister handles it outside and he'll dish it to Ty Cobser, who cashes it in. The extreme were up 4-1 after one. Second now, the extreme with the 8-1 lead. They prove they can transition. High pressure here from Boyer pays off. He picks up the ground ball, gets a little airborne there. He tallies his second of the night. 9-1. It was 12-3 after two. Brandon McAllister gets his second of what would be three goals in the night on this one. He spins and avoids his mark. The extreme go on to send the pack a 15-3 message. It was a big win, but the team knows their competition were short on numbers. It was a really good, uh, really good game as far as the scoreboard went. Um, Wainwright came with a pretty short roster. They only had nine runners and uh, their goalie tonight, so uh, they were missing a lot of their key players. Um, came in a little bit disadvantaged for sure. Um, and of course, you know, statistically speaking, we're a little stronger team than they are, so you know, kind of turned out like we thought it might, I guess. Yeah, it was a little, little all over side, but we wanted to hope to get a little more, hope to build on our, uh, on our offense and keep it going a little better. But it worked out in the end a bit, so hope it was a little better, but it was okay. So the extreme improved to a seven and one record so far this season, but are well aware of the fact tougher tasks lie ahead, including an ongoing battle for top spot in that tier two league with the Vermilion Roar. That'll be a tough one. It might go right down to the wire. You never know. We'll, we'll definitely be a top competitor to them. Absolutely. Yeah, we uh, we had uh, ten goal lead on the goals for and against uh, Vermilion. Otherwise, we're even uh, goal wins and losses. So. Uh, you know, tonight we'll get a few more goals for us uh, that will just take us a little further. But a loss could quickly switch that around anyway, but you know, we'll see what happens. Well, two weeks ago, gymnasts at Explosion Gymnastics were in Prince Albert for Provincials, and for Shaylin Brown it was a weekend that will last a lifetime. Matt Schumann caught up with Shaylin as she's tumbled, vaulted, and flipped her way into this week's edition of the Superstar Next Door. Well, it's fun, and... I really had nothing to do and I wasn't really good at anything else so my parents put me in gymnastics. And not a bad decision made by Shaylin's parents as the 10 year old has been successful in her young gymnastics career. At Provincials I got first on vault bars, beam and second on floor. I also represented Team Sask at Westerns and I won vault. She's qualified for the Western Canadian Summer Games team um, and that's taking place in Kamloops, BC at the end, uh, the middle of August. Shaylin has been in gymnastics for five years and has showed a lot of dedication practicing 20 hours a week. She's a great athlete. She's She's always got spunk and she, you know, she's here every single day of the week training. Um, she, she just is an outstanding athlete. She understands the sport of gymnastics and just loves being here every day. And spending half her life in gymnastics, Shaylin has big plans for next year. Next year I hope to compete national, no, national novice and compete at nationals. Matt Schumont, New Cap Sports. Brought to you by your local BRP dealer. Power Merchants of St. Paul, Norsask of North Battleford, and Rectech Power Products of Lloydminster, your local BRP dealers. I get nervous every time I see her flip off that beam. Very impressive athlete. 